Where are we? Ah, uh, well, we're at the boat launch in Hinsdale. And we're about to embark on the flotilla to shut down Vermont Yankee and to cheese local new plant. Well, you have an interesting hat. Yes. It harkens back to another time. Is there some significance? Indeed, indeed it does. Arr. I'm part of the Daniel Shea's nonviolent bio regional liberation frente. We all have our regalia on, except Jim. Uh huh. So, because Jim, you're just a, an independent member of that affinity group, are you? Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm no good at mariachi. Anybody need water? Okay. So as we look at this sweet pastoral scene, what lies beneath or all around? Any comments? Indeed. Or in the water, even. It's just scary enough. So yes, we think given that this is the same kind of nuke that is presently melting down in Fukushima, Japan, that maybe they should shut this one down too, given that it's right on the Connecticut River. Uh, we are just downstream from it. So, uh, shut it down. God damn it. Arr, shut it down. <laughs> this is the 2013 flotilla at Vermont Yankee. August 10th, 2003. There's the plant. There are the protesters in their flotilla. Thousand gallons a day 
are pouring into the Pacific Ocean. They're high in strontium-90 and tritium. Even the American corporate media can no longer ignore the magnitude of this catastrophe. That's our twin over there. Can you imagine that in this small Connecticut River? We're here to protect our river from Fukushima's twin. Shadman? Before coming to you today, I tried to contact the killers, the businessmen, the corporate zombies, the dam builders, and the nuclear captains of industry. I tried to enter their dreams, to reach their hearts, but I couldn't find their dreams nor their hearts. They are beings drowning in their greed, made blind by their lust for power, hardened by their addiction to money with a complete disregard for anything other than themselves. Perhaps their children will hear your voices. Your voices, your cries for mercy and wisdom, your cries for a future, for a tomorrow that's worth living. For you are the ones, you are the visionaries, you are the seers, you are the lovers of life who understand the preciousness of this natural world. You are our only hope. You are the planet's hope for a future of peace, truth, and beauty. So don't stop dreaming, don't stop acting on what you know in your hearts and minds is the righteous path to take. Don't stop what you are doing in your fight to shut down the beast. Don't give up what you are doing to save my brothers and sisters. Don't give up what you're doing to save our river. Don't stop. Never give up. Never give up. You are our only hope. We should listen to Shad, man. We should listen if the federal court comes down with a decision that says that our voices cannot be heard, that the voices of our legislators who are working to protect the environment cannot be heard. We need to be ready to jump on a moment's notice. If the corporations say no to the fish, say no to the people, say no to the water, say no to the air. Are you ready to jump at a moment's notice? And the corporations have taken over our federal court system. And preemption is the rule of the day. I will see you in front of the gate of Vermont Yankee. I will see you at the headquarters to Vermont Yankee. Thank you very much, Leslie, for the introduction. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, I've been rowing on the river since I came to the valley in 1985. You saw me in my little red and green, red and blue boat, sculling in front. And when I first came to town, there's a time in spring when all the shad had come up the river and they died and spawned. And the, water smelled. Well, they were dead, but you know, there were a lot of shad there, and as the years have gone by, there are fewer and fewer shad, and now we hardly ever see the shad at all. And when I first came to town, it, why, the river froze, and I had to stop rowing at Christmas, and I couldn't row again till March, but over the last decade or so, well, come Christmas, there's open water, Come January, there's open water, and pretty soon I was growing all, all the year round. And Well, I, I didn't think too much about it. The old men at the boathouse said it was all on account of the reactor it, um, up in Vernon. And well, you know how old men are, and you're not sure whether to believe them or not. And then I sort of, after Fukushima, it became, as this is a disaster and it's time to speak out. And there's an editorial in the Northampton, a picture in the Northampton um, paper about people out fishing on the ice, uh, ice fishing on the oxbow, and they had four, five, six inches of ice. And there I was in open water about a hundred yards away, and I scratched my head and didn't quite understand. And then one day I decided I'd come upstream. 
and I came upstream and there was open water and open water and open water and then I came to this place at Hinsdale and then you could see to the north you could see ice and to the south you could see water and I've taken some pictures and there's one back there and it's right over here you can you can see that all that hot water comes out and I check this out with one of those professors at Smith exactly how much heat that was and this is what we figured out why well, this is a 650 megawatt reactor it's approximately one-third efficient which means for every unit of electricity it produces two units of heat and well that works out to be 1300 megawatts well how much is that so we sat down with a pencil and paper and this is what we found out if you take the contents of an olympic size swimming pool some 15 uh, 1.5 million liters and take it at room temperature and then boil it and then boil it until it's entirely dry. Why, you can do that every 1.4 hours with the heat coming out of this reactor. And there are those people who say that this is, there's no greenhouse effect. But I must say, if you put a fire in the greenhouse, you are warming up the world. And, and each the reactor in this small way is warming up the world. And so when we came around here, I rode across the river and I took my thermometer and, you know, right upstream it's a pleasant 74 degrees. And then I rode down here and tried to surf the waves a little bit in the outflow track and you can see where it comes out and why we got some pretty warm water there and the thermometer went up to like 84 degrees. And it's, so that's apparently within their acceptable limits, but their acceptable limits you know, have ruined the Connecticut River. It used to be a cold water river and it's lost that designation. And this made Shad Man and his kind very, very sad. Someone seemed to be needing to do something. I'll try again. So it's a beautiful day and it would be wonderful if it wasn't for the fact that at this very moment, Vermont Yankee was dumping millions of gallons of hot water into this river. And they do this every day, 24 seven, hundreds of millions of gallons of hot water. And why do they do it? Do they have to do it? Do they have no choice to keep this nuke going? Do they have a choice? Does anyone have? Yes, yes. yes. What's the choice? Shut it down. No. <laughs> choice, but that's not the choice they have. You, if you turn around and you see those green ups, those cups sitting on that white building, those are Entergy's cooling towers. And if they use those cooling towers, they wouldn't dump hot water into the river. So why do they use the river instead of the cooling towers? And why is that important right now? He is one of these new animals. It's a merchant plant, which means it has no rate base to go back to. It has no one to give it the money to keep going when it screws up. That's part of its problem right now. That's why its stock has gone down. That's why it's a sinking ship right now. It's a sinking ship we have to ensure goes down to the bottom of the Connecticut River, never to return. We have to pull the plug, but to do it, we have to understand the moment in history we are at. This reactor may not be operating in 24 months or in 12 months, and it is essential that in Vermont, this corporation is held accountable. It is held accountable by stopping polluting the Connecticut River. It is held accountable by creating a decommissioning 
fund that can ensure this site is cleaned up. It is made accountable by making sure that the requirements for cleanup are the strictest that a state can do. This is the work we have to do. This is our work to make our legislators understand that this is still an important issue, that this is not done. I believe that the Public Service Board will not give Entergy another certificate of public good. I also believe that the federal court will not rule in Entergy's favor. But even with that, they may attempt to persevere and procrastinate and go on as long as they can. Oh, and no. our job is to ensure that their days are numbered. And the way we number them is by piling on one financial requirement after another and another and another until we break them. And they will break. Yay! So join us in breaking them. So the flotilla is returning. Robin Conley, who is one of the major organizers and facilitators. So what do you think? It's, well, I'm the flotilla's just so done a second year? A second year, and it went wonderfully, and I'm glad to have this event, and it's so great to have people out on the water to protest Vermont Yankee. Yeah. So thank you for your work last year. Uh, well, it's great so, to be here again. Thank you. Yeah, well, hopefully we won't need to do this next year. Wouldn't that be great? Yahoo! It would. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so... Thanks for so the great are. music, Court. Yeah, Thank so, you. So, Court Dorsey, here you are again. That's a clamshell alliance. That's that's a pretty old shirt. Yeah, this is an old one. I just keep it for special occasions like this. Yes, yeah, so... And this was a special occasion. How was it for you out there on the... It was beautiful. It was, it was wonderful to see all those people out there paddling and going over there and shaking their paddles at that nuke. Yeah. And uh, we're hoping to cool down this river before too long so our nice, cold, loving fish can come back happily. Yeah. So that could be one of our new ones, our new slogans. Cool it, man. Cool yeah. it. <laughs> I like it. Okay, thanks, Cool.